Well, all this talk about archaeology is going to help. How about doing some? Let's get down to answering what are some of these dramatic archaeological discoveries that have really demonstrated the reliability of the text. And here we could go on and on and on, and some of you probably will think that we are going to go on and on and on. But I'll try to make it interesting and help you to smile too. Have you ever learned, notice that you learn faster and better when you smile? I don't know why that is. Your defenses seem to go down and choop, it slips right in. So we'll try to make you uh, smile a little bit so that uh, learning takes place. Uh, Let's uh, talk about how archaeology uh, verifies history. Let's go into a case of uh, missing persons, uh, missing places, <laughs> misplacements of material, misplaced text or missing text. Let's go to a whole list of these. Uh, I bring forward for you, first of all, Isaiah chapter 20, verse 1. Sargon, S-A-R-G-O-N, Sargon the Great. Here is the man who is supposed to have captured the northern kingdom of uh, Israel in 722 BC. He captured Samaria, took it captive, and his name is Sargon. Now we had a list of all the kings of Assyria. We had the Khorsabad, K-H-O-R-S-A-B-A-D, Khorsabad king list, and we had this long list of kings in the uh, wedge-shaped cuneiform writing on documents, clay tablets. That's nicer on clay. The only thing you can do is break them, but you can't erase them. And uh, you can't, they can't rot. They're, they're, they're baked in the stone, so it's really nice. You can kick them around all you want, but you're still going to read them. And so uh, here it is, baked in, but we've missed Sargon. The Bible said Sargon. And in the end of the 1800s, it was possible for profs and classes to point their bony finger at some little Miss Muffet who was an evangelical conservative believer and say, where is your Sargon? You know, <laughs> the poor kid shook and some, I believe, I believe, you know. And, but there's no Sargon. And just bear down heavily, you know, and put the, the real pressure on them. They go home, Mom, where's Sargon? Sargon. Pastor, where's Sargon? There was no Sargon. And uh, we had excavated Nineveh too. We had the great palace of Nineveh. He wasn't home. And uh, Sargon was definitely a missing person. He should have been reported to the FBI. Well, uh, lo and behold, someone working in the French-English uh, embassy went 11 miles across the Tigris River. Uh, a, a little bit north of uh, Nineveh, uh, and some of you have seen this has been in the news there, Mazul, and went north of that to a site called Khorsabad, K-H-O-R-S-A-B-A-D, Khorsabad, and lo and behold, they came across a ruin, a ruin of uh, almost uh, 15 to 20 acres of material <laughs> with buildings, room after room after room. And here were the two great bull lines weighing some 20 tons each at the entrance. And over top of the entrance reads, Sargon the Great Conqueror of Samaria. Honest. Everything except scripture verse. <laughs> it was there. It was there. Here was Sargon, missing person for a long time, suddenly turned up. Why? Because these archaeological digs are accidental. If you're talking about all the work we've done in the 20th century, and it has been enormous, and the books with the excavation reports would probably circle this room, and we still would not get them in. It's been an enormous, prodigious amount of material. Almost every one of the major universities of the world have had their hands in it during this 20th century. But I want to tell you that you take all of them together, and of just Palestinian sites alone, there are less than 1% of all possible sites have been excavated. Less. Less than 1%. So there are some surprises, and I hope the people who are writing have a good sense of humor, because there's much more to be found. I think the Lord's just waiting for them to say, uh, this didn't exist and to have someone come up like Schliemann did with his bronze greaves and say, you mean this? And put it out there too as well. We have a number of cases.